Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this cloth animation in Blender 4.0 on a MacBook Pro, M1 chip, and 16 RAM. So it's finally time for an upgrade on my MacBook so I can make better videos for you. So this is my request for you guys to help me save for a new one, and it's completely free for you. Just watch the whole video, like my videos, and that's it. So in this video, I'm going to use my all-time soda can. You can now download my 3D soda can model for free. Link in the description. So first start with set up the blend file. So before we start, this video is inspired by J underscore Rowan. I'll link his channel in the description. So press A to select all, then press X to delete it. So if you are using my free 3D model soda can, I'll show you how to import that model. Go to the file and click on append, then find your downloaded file and click on that. Click on the object, select the middle soda can and click on append. Press option plus G to center the object on the 3D cursor. Then press S plus 0.3 to scale it down. Then press control plus A to apply the scale. And now we're going to set up the background. Then press shift plus A to add a plane. Then press S plus 9 to scale it up by 9. Press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. This is how you enable the numpad for laptops. Go to edit, then click on preferences. Go to input and then check emulate numpad. And now press R plus X plus 90 to rotate it by 90 degrees. Then press G plus Y plus 2 to move it on the Y axis. Then press F2 to rename it to BG, a shortening for background. And for Mac users like me, press FN plus F2. So now we are going to animate the soda can. So make sure you're on frame one and press N to show the sidebar, this one over here. Then right click over the Y location to make a single keyframe. So this orange thing over here is a keyframe. So go to frame 50, right click over the Z rotation and make a single keyframe. Then go to frame 80, change Z rotation to 60, then right click and make a single keyframe. And last, go to frame 150, change the Y location to 2, right click and make a single keyframe. And now we are diving into the graph editor. Open a new window by holding your mouse over here until this symbol shows up, then drag the new window that way you will until the new window show up. Then change the editor type to the graph editor. So unhide the Z rotation. Then press the home button. For Mac users, press FN plus pile to the left and press T and change to linear. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar. And this is what we have now. I think this looks good. So now we are going to set up the cloth things. Then press shift plus A to add a plane. And now press R plus X plus 90 to rotate it by 90 degrees. Then press S plus 3.5 to scale it by 3.5. Go to edit mode by hitting the the tab button. So this is the tab button just right over the caps lock. And right click and click on the subdivide. And here on the left we can change the settings. And now change the number of cuts to 100. Yes, I know it's a lot, but trust me. Then go to object mode by hitting the tab button. And now change the Y location to 0 0.8. So the plane is right after the soda can. Then rename it to cloth so we know this is the cloth object. So now for the cloth settings, go to physics and click on cloth. Then select the soda can and click on collision and leave it like this. Then select the cloth again. So this is going to be a lot. So be ready. Change the speed multiplier to 0.75 and change the air viscosity to 0.5. And now under stiffness, change the tension, compression, and shear to 1.5 and then change the bend to 0 0.1 and now under damping change the tension compression and shear to zero then unfold the cache change the end to 150 and now unfold the collisions change the quality to 3 and change the distance to 0 0.003 check the self collision and last change the distance under the self collision to 0 0.003 as well and now for the last part of the cloth settings unfold the field weight and change the gravity to zero then scroll up to cache and click on bake. Wait for the baking to bake. So I'm going to speed up this process. And for those who are wondering how long this took me, the baking time took me 42 seconds. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar and this is what we have now. I think this looks good, but I want the cloth to wrap around the soda can. So to do that, first change the end frame to 150 and then click on delete bake. Press shift plus A to add a force field and add the force. Then change the strength to minus to 250. Then press S 
plus 0.9 to scale it down a little bit, then press Control plus A to apply the scale. Select the force, press Shift, and then select the soda can. And now press Control plus P and click on the object to parent the force to the soda can. Then select the cloth again and click on Bake again. Then wait for the baking to bake. So I'm going to speed up this process again. And for those who are wondering how long this took me, the baking time took me 1 minute and 36 seconds. And like you see, the cloth object is not smooth at all. So to fix that, go to the modifier and then add a subdivision surface modifier. Then change the viewport to 2. And then right click and click on Shade Smooth. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar. And this is what we have now. I think this looks good. And now let's make a cloth textile material. And this is going to be a lot. And I mean a lot, so be ready. Select the cloth, and now change the editor type to shadings. Click on New, and rename it to Cloth Material. And before we start the whole process, so go to the Render Settings, press Z to switch Shading Mode and select Render Mode. Then change the Render Engine from EV to Cycles. And if you have a GPU device, go and change to that for better rendering. Also change the Max Samples on the Viewport to 64, and change the Noise Threshold to 0.1, so you can render faster. Also change the Max Samples on the Render to 300. Now let's set up the HDRI. So go to World. Click on this yellow dot and select the Environment Texture. Click on Open and choose you HDRI Image. In the description, I linked the HDRI I used. So download that. Now back to the Material Settings. Press Shift plus A to add a color ramp and plug the color into the base color. Then select the color ramp. Press Shift plus D to duplicate. Now change the black color to hashtag ADADAD. Then plug the color into the roughness. Now press Shift plus A to add a mix color. Then plug the result into FAC on both the color ramps. Press N to unhide the sidebar. And here on the label, you can give your node your own name. I doing this so you can follow the tutorial better. Select the first color ramp, then press Shift plus D to duplicate, then plug the color into the A on the mix color. Now change the pose to 0.3, select color ramp number 3, then press Shift plus D to duplicate, then plug the color from color ramp 4 to B on mix color. Add a wave texture. Plug the color into FAC on the color ramp 3. Select a wave texture and press on Troll plus T to enable the node wrangler. So this is how enable the node wrangler. Go to edit, then preference. Click Add On, then go to Search and type in Node Wrangler. Check the Node Wrangler, and here you go. Then select the mapping and press X to delete it. Then plug the UV to the vector on the wave texture. And now change the X to Y, and change the distortion to 7, and change the detail all the way up to 15. Select the wave texture. Press Shift plus Control plus D to duplicate the node settings and all of that. Plug the color to the FAC on the color ramp 4 and change back the Y to X, and now add a value node, and plug the value to scale on both the wave texture nodes, and last change the value number to 250, and add a bump node, and plug the normal into the normal, and change the strength to 0.3, and press Shift plus D to duplicate, and plug the normal into the normal, and change the strength to 0.15, and press Shift plus D to duplicate, and plug the normal into the normal, and last change the strength to 0.4, and plug the result into the height on bump number 3, and now add a noise texture node, and change the scale to 500, and last change the detail all up to 15, plug the fact to the height on the bump number 1, Select the noise texture and press Shift plus D to duplicate. And now change the scale to 50 and plug the fact to the height on bump number 2. And last plug the UV to vector on both the noise textures. Now you wonder where do I change the color. Unfold the sheen. Change the weight and roughness to 1. And here on the tint, you can change the color that you like. And if you want, you use the same color as I do. The hex is C791C1. So now if you want, you can pause and screenshot this. And sit by your own and take your time and do the material. But here we've a cloth material. Let's set up the scene. Now press Shift plus A to add a camera. Go to the camera settings. Change the focal length to 150 millimeters. Then press 0 on your numpad to get to camera view. Unfold the viewport display and change the pass part 2 to 1 so it's black around. Then unfold the composition guides. Check the thirds and center. Then press Shift plus A to add an empty plane axis. Now change the Y location for the empty to 1.31 and then rename it to camera focus. 
then select the camera, then change the Y location to minus 18, and last change the Y rotation to minus 6 or D8. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. Now check the depth of field, and change the focus object to the camera focus, and change the end frame to 70. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. And now, for the last render settings, go to output. So I like to render my videos in 4K. So the number for that is 3840 and 2160 and change the frame rate to 30. And to make a video of this, change the file format to FFmpeg video, then unfold the encoding and change the container to MPEG4 and last change the output quality to high quality. Then go to render settings unfold the color management and change the look to high contrast and here is my results thank you for watching and i hope you like my tutorial comment down below what i can make in the next video and with the editing and all that thing and feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos